when Suray comes out with a lens that stops down to T1.2 and calls it Nightwalker, you know it's gonna be a beast of a lens. Welcome back to the channel and I am so excited to be part of the launch of the Nightwalker Cine Lens series with Suray. So I'm gonna be doing a review of the 24mm, 35mm, 55mm, as well as a set lens to show you everything about these lenses. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and these videos are gonna be dropping one after the next. So let's get started. The range. Like I said, the Suray Nightwalker Cine Lens series comes in 24mm, 35 and 55 mm Now these lenses come out in a bunch of different mounts. It's Sony E, Fuji X, RF or Canon and Red Komodo and MFT. Now you can do your own calculation as multiplying it out to what your focal range becomes but I have the 24mm T1.2 here and this is going to give me a 48mm on micro four thirds. Build quality. In true Suray fashion they are built like solid heavy metal chunks. They're cold to the touch as they should be and I've actually weighed this one specifically and it comes in at 510 grams. The filter size is 67 mil and that is across the range of all 24, 35 and 55. So if you've got some nice ND filters or polarizers you can just swap them out between the lenses without having to buy more. And because these go down to T1.2 if you're trying to film in daylight and get your shutter speed down so you can get that cinematic look you're going to need some good variable NDs. The focus ring and aperture ring are smooth like butter and they have an amazing resistance to them. Uh, what I do like about the Suray Nightwalk is, is that the focus ring is a lot easier to move and has less resistance than the aperture ring. Some Cine lenses the aperture ring moves a little bit too easy and you accidentally bump it or turn it but this this is quite nice also they have a monstrous 270 degree focus throw so if you're a manual focus lover like i am and i think once you're looking at cine lenses you kind of know what manual focus is grabbing focus with these manually because of that 270 degree focus throw is amazing now the aperture ring is clickless and stepless now i know some people like that some people don't i personally do like it because you can obviously darken an image without having to have clicks to it and you can obviously put your aperture exactly where you want to if you want to dial in your exposure like that t-stop versus f-stop the difference between t-stop and f-stop is quite simple actually a lot of people complicate it F-stop is essentially the measurement of the aperture, so an f1.4 lens measures the amount of light coming in and that is the aperture. However, T-stop is actually the amount of light that actually hits the sensor. So essentially T-stop is a lot more accurate than F-stop. Basically what that means is if you've got one of the Suray lens and you're filming something at T1.8 and you decide to change your focal range and you put the other lens on, it's also at T1.8, your exposure will be identical. However, at F1.8 and you swap out lenses, F1.8 doesn't mean that the exposure is going to be the same just because it is F1.8. The Lumix 25mm F1.7 versus the Suray 24mm T1.2. Now why am I comparing these two lenses? One is a photo lens and one is a dedicated cine lens. A lot of this is just because people on MFT generally have the Lumix 25mm f1.7 and a lot of people think it's a great lens. Now just a little bit of confirmation over here. Photo lenses are generally sharper, they have more contrast, that is what they are designed for. Cine lenses are generally not so sharp. However, it's a good benchmark to put a lens like this against, as well as just because they are very, very close in millimeters. The range of these lenses is very close. So I'm gonna do a few tests over here so I can show you guys. This is the Suray 24mm at T1.2. And this is the Lumix 25mm at F1.7. Now it's pretty obvious that you get such an insane amount of light more coming in at T1.2 and this is something that I wanna show you because a lot of people don't understand how bright T1.2 is. But something else that I want you to look at is how pleasing the background is. These Suray lenses at T1.2 have a beautiful bokeh on them. It is smooth, it's creamy, absolutely love it. Now I want you to look at the sharpness of the Suray T1.2 and the Lumix at F1.7. The Suray shouldn't be as sharp at T1.2 and when you stop it down to T1.7 to somewhat match the look of the F1.7 of the Lumix, it's clear that Suray did an epic job on these lenses. Bokeh. 
Now, when it comes to bokeh on a 24 mil lens, you are not gonna get a massive amount of bokeh. If you don't know by now, so long focal range on a lens produces more bokeh naturally. Hence why at 200 mil at f4, you can get a lot of bokeh. However, that also changes when you move closer to your subject. So if you are gonna get quite close to your subject with a 24 mil at t1.2, you're gonna get a beautiful depth of field and these lenses are amazing. Regarding that bokeh and moving closer, I get practically no distortion with these lenses on the micro four thirds system. I know some cine lenses suffer with some distortion on the edges and things are bowing out of control. I get none of that here and I've noticed absolutely nothing. Sharpness and picture quality. Now, because there's not a lot of reviews out there on this, I'm gonna show you a brick wall test on the sharpness of this. I do wanna make it clear that this is one test that I generally don't like doing, but it's just because there's obviously not gonna be a ton of reviews out there. So if you are into that, you can have a look. And the reason that I don't like doing this is when you set your focus on something, you don't normally focus in the center and check on the edges. When, you, when you're talking about cine lenses, you're looking at slight imperfections of a lens that adds to the characteristic of that lens and if you are specifically filming something with someone in the you know the rule of thirds or on the left of the frame or on the right of the frame you're not going to go and just set your focus in the middle in other words if i was sitting this side you would grab focus on me you wouldn't grab focus on here and then shift me to this side i hope that makes sense but just for argument's sake this is the center sharpness at t1.2 this is at t2 and this is at T2.8. I'm not gonna keep stopping it down to T4, T8 and just keep going because as you can see, naturally a lens will always get sharper as it moves to the center kind of sweet spot. This is edge sharpness at T1.2, T2, and T2.8. Cine lenses aren't designed to be overly sharp. Now some cine lenses are sharp and although that may be great and that is something that you want, you can always add sharpness in post which I've done previously on a cine lens to show an example. Most cinematographers fall in love with the characteristics of a lens that makes it almost imperfect. The faults of a lens is what adds to it. I'm sure you've watched a lot of high-end Netflix movies lately and you'll look at the lens and they're quite blurry on the edges, they're not very sharp. It's a characteristic that makes a lens quite nice sometimes. Obviously for photos, you want it to be crystal clear. Chromatic aberration. Now it's no secret that chromatic aberration at T1.2 or T1, T1.4, you are gonna get some chromatic aberration. Most lenses that are manufactured to go down to such a low T-stop or F-stop always have that chromatic aberration. Now the 24 mm does have chromatic aberration. Sure is not out there saying that this lens does not have any chromatic aberration at all. But I find that pointing a lens to a high contrast area where you've got some leaves with some light bleeding in from the background that's super overexposed and literally trying to find the fault of chromatic aberration is kind of pointless. And the reason for that is it's very seldom in all the years that I've been filming that I've actually noticed intense amounts of chromatic aberration. Most times when you film, you're filming not looking for the chromatic aberration or in a scene that's providing chromatic aberration because that light source isn't correct anyway. What I'm trying to say is that real world tests are far more important. I have found lenses that when I'm filming at T1.2, T1.4, T1.5, you'll find that the hairline of someone where the sun's bleeding from the background, you got that hair light, you've got uncontrollable amounts of chromatic aberration hitting that person. And for me, that is far more important than pointing it to a bunch of leaves and trying to find chromatic aberration. Now, when it comes to Sure 24 mm 1.2, I don't find a lot of chromatic aberration. Yes, here and there, you're gonna get a little bit, but it's nothing that you could remove in post or that it's even noticeable. So in saying that chromatic aberration on these lenses, it's gonna be there T1.2, definitely. But in real world scenarios, when you're filming, you're not even gonna see anything at all. Focus breathing. Now, here's a little focus breathing test. I think what a lot of people get confused at with focus breathing is the out of focus element that's increasing in size and writing that off to focus breathing. Focus breathing is when you see this massive jar from what is in focus and you transition the focus to the background or the foreground and you kind of get this bit of a extra zoom kind of capability. That is focus breathing. When you're looking at something like this, the focus breathing is minimal. You basically have almost no focus breathing. The only thing that's really happening is 
either the foreground or the background is gaining so much bokeh and out of focus characteristics that it's increasing in size, kind of creating an illusion of focus breathing. So when it comes to focus breathing with something like this, you're good. Now I've been using the Sure set for quite some time and I can tell you I absolutely love them. I have used them on real world paid jobs over the past while and honestly I'm blown away by these lenses. They look good and you know what I like the most honestly, I don't know what it is but I'm just a sucker for cine lenses, is this little cutout gap and when you roll it you kind of, it looks like the super high end stuff. Absolutely love that. Now I do want to say thank you to Sure for sending these out for me to do the review. And yes, obviously this is not a paid review. They are not asking me to say anything whatsoever. In actual fact, I will tell you something that Sure did say. They did tell me that if I don't like the lenses, I'm more than welcome to send them back. I don't have to do a review of them and I can just kind of part ways. The fact that I still have these lenses doing this review and use them on paid jobs, definitely tells you something. All the footage that you've seen today is from the Sure 24 mil. Michelle and I have gone through an extensive amount of filming to categorize the 24, 35 and 55. So make sure to come back to check out the 35 mil review, then the 55, and then we'll be dropping a full review of all of them together and kind of show you why you need the entire set. So that's it from me. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you on the next one, wherever you are in the world. Have a good day, good evening, good night, goodbye.